Madam President, after a few weeks of working remotely to help flatten the coronavirus curve, we're back in Washington to continue our coronavirus response and address other important issues. It's been an incredibly difficult couple of months for our country, in fact, for most of the world. More than one million Americans have contracted the coronavirus and thousands have died. Our economy has taken a huge hit. Millions of Americans are out of work and businesses are struggling to stay afloat. And Americans are worried. They're worried about their own health. They're worried about the health of their families and their loved ones. And they're worried about their finances. My colleagues and I know that Americans are suffering. And our overriding priority over the past two months has been responding to the coronavirus crisis. We've passed several major response bills and provided substantially more than $2 trillion in assistance. We have funded testing, medical care, personal protective equipment for frontline medical personnel, vaccine and treatment development, paid sick leave, unemployment benefits, direct relief payments to American citizens, forgivable loans for small businesses, and much more. Our goal has been to provide a comprehensive response addressing not just the medical priorities, but also the economic impact this virus has had on so many American families. And there's more work to be done. Right now, a big part of that work is monitoring the implementation of the legislation we've already passed. We've provided a tremendous amount of money, and we need to make sure that it's getting where it needs to go as quickly as possible, and it's being spent in the most effective way. Monitoring the implementation of the legislation we've already passed is also crucial for informing any future legislation. As I said, we provided a tremendous amount of money for coronavirus, equal to almost 50% of the entire federal budget for 2020. And it's important that any future funding be carefully targeted. We need to make sure that federal dollars are going only to real coronavirus priorities. Our children and grandchildren, Madam President, will be footing the bill for the money that we're adding to the national debt. As a case in point, the debt to GDP, which was scheduled to be 79% this year, is now expected to be, in the year 2020, 101%. That jump from 79% debt to GDP to 101% debt to GDP is the largest jump, I'm told, literally since 1943, in the middle of World War II. So, Madam President, it's essential that we spend wisely. In addition to overseeing the implementation of the coronavirus legislation we passed and gathering data to inform any future bills, we also have a number of coronavirus-related nominations to consider something that is a role that's unique to the United States Senate under the Constitution. When it comes to judicial nominations, the nominations to the executive branch, the Senate has the responsibility to ensure that we conduct the research, investigate nominees, hold confirmation hearings, and ultimately vote to put people into key positions in the administration and on the courts. So. The question about why we're here this week, Madam President, I think is a fairly easy one to answer, and that is that there are lots of really important positions that are key not only to the health care crisis that we're facing in this country, but to our ongoing national security priorities, as well as to the economic challenges that we are facing through this crisis. In fact, this week, the Senate Banking Committee will be holding a hearing on the nomination of Brian D. Miller to be the special Inspector General for Pandemic Recovery at the Treasury Department, a key role created by the legislation that we passed here in the Congress, critically important to the implementation, making sure that everything done, is done in the right way. As we all know, Inspectors General play a key oversight role in federal departments, helping to root out waste, fraud, and other misuses of taxpayer dollars. If he is confirmed, Mr. Miller will be an essential part of ensuring that the trillions that we've provided for coronavirus relief are spent properly. Committees are doing other essential coronavirus work this week as well. The Senate Health, Education, 
Labor and Pensions Committee is holding a hearing on an initiative Senators Blunt and Alexander worked to get included in the coronavirus legislation. This initiative is designed to spur innovation, private sector, public sector collaboration with a goal of dramatically increasing our coronavirus testing capabilities. So that's going on in the Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee. The Senate Commerce Committee, of which I'm a member, will be holding a hearing this week looking at the impact of COVID-19 on the airline industry. Uh, something we know is uh, an industry that we know is, is being profoundly impacted by what's happening with the virus. And next week, the Senate Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee will be hearing directly from the leaders of our fight against the coronavirus. Doctors Fauci, Redfield, and Hahn, and Admiral, Admiral Giroir. Committee work will play a key role in any future coronavirus bill. And it's good to have committees able to meet once again here in Washington, D.C. And of course, while the COVID-19 pandemic will continue to be our priority here in Washington in the coming weeks and months, there is other essential work that we have to do for the American people. Appropriations bills, nominations to essential administration posts and critical national security legislation are just some of the other items on our agenda over the next couple of months. This week, the Senate Armed Services Committee and the Senate Intelligence Committee are holding hearings on nominees for key national security positions, including the Director of National Intelligence and the Secretary of the Navy. Madam President, Senate Republicans are committed to getting our country through this crisis and helping American workers and businesses deal with the virus's impact. We'll be discussing a lot of ideas over the next couple of weeks, from tax and regulatory relief to support for farmers and ranchers to ways to spur job creation and shield responsible businesses from frivolous litigation once the economy is opened up again. And as I said, we'll continue to focus on making sure that the money that we've provided gets where it is needed as fast as possible. Madam President, the United States undoubtedly has more tough days ahead, but we are going to get through them. And we are going to come out tougher on the other side. In the meantime, we've got work to do here in the United States Senate. There are people across this country who are hurting, who are struggling, and there are many priorities that need to be addressed. And so I'm pleased that uh, the Senate is open for business. Uh, we're going to be working in the next few months, as I mentioned, on the National Defense Authorization Bill, a piece of legislation that we have to do on an annual basis that deals with all our na critical national security priorities and making sure that the men and women who defend this country, uh, the American people and our interests around the world have the, the training, the equipment, the resources to do their jobs to keep Americans safe. We've got a critical water infrastructure bill that will be marked up by the Environment and Public Works Committee. Uh, also a piece of legislation that is important to uh, the economy in this country, Madam President. And so if you look at the, the long list of things and priorities that we need to deal with here in the United States Senate, uh, it's important that we uh, be about the people's business. And I know I can speak um, from personal experience that over the past several weeks, uh, like my colleagues, uh, we've worked really hard to stay connected. I worked really hard to stay in touch with the people across South Dakota um, using technology, platforms and apps that uh, I didn't know, had never really had much experience with using in the past, things from Zoom to Skype to Google Hangout to Shindig. There are all kinds of uh, interesting new apps that I think many of us became acquainted with and conducted meetings, uh, lots of virtual meetings, and stayed connected with our constituents to, to see what's um, important to them. Uh, to find out what's working, what's not working, and uh, get the feedback about what we can be doing even better to respond to the crisis that is out there. But there is no substitute, Madam President, when it comes to doing the nation's business, to being here, for committees to work, to meet, for us to be able to vote, for us to be able to deal with the important nominations, as I mentioned, that under the Constitution, we have the obligation, the responsibility, the Senate does, advise and consent, whether that's a judicial nomination, whether that's a key cabinet post, an important administration position as it pertains to national security or the virus. Uh, there are lots of priority items uh, for which the United States Senate has a key and principal responsibility, and we need to be about that business. And so I hope that uh, in the days and the weeks ahead, as we take on those challenges, that we can work together in a way that uh, provides maximum safety for the people who uh, work here, but also uh, gives the uh, important priority 
to the items and the issues that are critical to Americans. At this point, in the middle of this crisis, and hopefully when we get on the other side of it, those important, critical national security priorities, economic priorities, and um, other business that, important, that the American people need us to deal with on a daily basis. So, Madam President, I, I thank you for the time and uh, look forward to working with my colleagues, albeit in different circumstances than uh, we've had to deal with in the past. But nevertheless, to have the United States Senate, uh, the people's representatives here, doing the important work that the American people expect us to do. Madam President, I yield the floor. I suggest you have. I yield the floor.